There's been a lot of talk about infectious diseases from animals, like West Nile, swine flu, bird flu. But today, we're going to talk about one that's been around for a long time. Lyme disease. Lyme disease. So let's put this in perspective. West Nile, which has gotten a lot of press lately, has about 2,000 cases per year, while Lyme disease has up to 35,000 confirmed. And it's estimated that only 10% of people report that they have Lyme disease. So that means that there could be 350,000 people with Lyme disease, a disease that if it goes untreated, can cause permanent arthritic conditions and brain damage. Well, if you find yourself with one of these, you better get it checked. Turns out, He's got Lyme disease. We're talking about a disease caused by ticks, an arachnid parasite that lives in trees and grass and is just waiting for mammals to walk by so it can latch on and have a little blood meal. Okay, there are a lot of types of ticks in the US, but only three of them are of major concern. And for Lyme disease, the big player is the black-legged tick. So what's the ecology of this disease? To help us understand this better, I went and talked to a disease ecologist and tick guy, Brian Allen. So the ecology of Lyme disease is pretty interesting. So Lyme is caused by a bacterium, a spirochete, called Borrelia burgdorferi. A tick is not born infected with that pathogen. It actually has to acquire that pathogen from feeding on an infected host. So it's born as a larva, free from infection with the Lyme agent. It then takes one blood meal, molts into the next life stage, which is the nymph. The nymph takes one blood meal, molts into the next life stage, which is an adult. Adults take a blood meal, they mate, and they die. We think most of the human cases of Lyme disease are caused by that middle life stage, the nymph life stage. And so not only do we see a lot of cases every summer of Lyme disease, but they're increasing in number and they're increasing in distribution. Ticks actually breed on deer, and so how many deer you have in an area can influence how many ticks you have. And then the animals that are the carriers of the pathogen are things like small mammals, rodents and things like that. Um, and so large populations of small mammals contribute to high prevalence of the infectious agent. So pretty much all of us live in a place with a whole lot of ticks, but don't freak out if you get bitten by a tick. Not every tick is carrying an infectious agent, and so you could be bitten by a tick and uh, not be exposed to any kind of disease. A tick's not like a mosquito. A mosquito feeds really quickly, you know, so it kind of uh, takes a quick blood meal and flies away. A tick actually has to be on a host for a long time uh, to take the full amount of blood that it wants to extract, often days. And so because of that, you may have actually a pretty big window of time to remove that tick before it can even begin to transmit a disease to you. Let me just end by saying that understanding an ecosystem is really important for our health. And Lyme disease is a great example of that because you have a tick feeding on multiple hosts. It's all connected. People get interested in ecology when they find out that there's a connection between ecology and their health. And so it's kind of fun to be one of the people who can spread that message that ecology matters. You can watch more of our videos here. And if you like them, subscribe.